tie an articulated perch. We start with a wiggle shank from Flyman Fish Company and Uni dot white thread. We tie maybe half of the shank, no, a third of the shank. I've got some Senyo laser dub in yellow. And I'm pulling it out of the package with my Magnum Pitagene tool, the clip. And what it does is it pulls the hairs out for me and, and I'm trying to line up the threads as much as possible. I take my uh, MT stacker, stack those fibers together and tie them in. I'm gonna take a moment just to line up my fibers a little bit. I'll use a comb and I'll pick them out a bit. You can see me in the background just trying to get all the fibers to go in the same direction and not to be folded over. I'm just using a comb. I take that bundle and tie it in and try to keep it on the top, top portion of the shank of the hook. And this shank is just to articulate the fly. I get a little more action off the tail section of it. I actually took it into the into a uh, test tank, fly tester, to see if it make sure it worked. Now I'm going to take some whip finish. I'm going to take some orange ice dubbing just a few strands and I'm going to wet it and fold it over and tie it in and fold it over so I get it on both sides the orange ice, ice dubbing tastes pretty good you got to try it <laughs> you tie it in Fold it back to this side. It gives me my little flash of orange color, which uh, perch are known for. Whip finish. I don't do too many because I know I'm going to use a little bit of super glue on this, just as a precaution. And I go underneath, and that's where I dro drop my super glue. and spread it around a bit. And I take my wire cutters and just cut off that excess shank. I'm gonna set that aside for a moment. Now I'm going to take a 2499 SPBL, and this happens to be a size 8. And take my same thread, Uni, 8 dot in white, and lay down a base, and we're going to bring it back, nah, just before it. Where, where the bar would be, basically. I've got a piece of, eh, it's about a half inch, quarter of an inch, piece of 30 pound mono, and I'm gonna crimp the middle of it, and I'm gonna use it to attach my, kin, my uh, Wiggle shank. It's like a little, you can see a little flat section in the middle. 
I get more contact to the hook underneath. And just figure eighting through it. I'm going to actually use uh, some 3x tippet fluorocarbon as my loop, and I'm going to use that to anchor it onto the hook. Right here, I have some 3x tippet. I'm going to put a crimp in it at the tip, and then put another crimp all oh, about 3 eighths of an inch behind it, tie in the first at the first crimp. See that space in between there? That's where my that's gonna form my loop. And I'm gonna match flat flat the crimp portions to the crimp portions. So I'm tying it at the tip. Now I'm gonna get that articulated section, that tail section, string it through. Make one wrap of the thread and then match those flat sections. And you see how it creates a loop? And then I get a lot of surface contact between those two flat, crimp, flattened or crimped sections. Now I'm taking that tippet and I've gone over the top, underneath the front of the hook and back over the top again. That's why the pressure goes right into the hook and not onto the tippet itself. You clip the excess fluorocarbon. Once again, that's 3x fluorocarbon. And I'm trimming off the excess mono, 30 pound mono. Gonna add a touch of super glue. You don't need that much, it just needs to wet it. It ain't going nowhere. Just spread it around a bit. Now I'm going to take just one ostrich hurl, double it in half, and twist it with my hackle pliers. Twisting it flares it out, and it's kind of like it's like the gills of the fish. You know when they do that crazy loop, a uh, wounded bait fish, you can see its gills. Now uh, that's what this is meant to represent. And tie that ostrich hurl off. Whip. Now I'm going to take a bit more of that Senyo laser dub in yellow. Make another bundle and add it to the top. See what I'm doing is just laying on top of each other. I'm just trying to line those fibers up with each other. This stuff is really puffy when it's dry, but when it when it gets wet, it slims down really nicely. So I've got that bundle of dubbing, yellow dubbing, tied in and then fold it over and tie it down again. Now I have some I'm going to take another bit of UV ice dub in orange and it should match up a little bit when it lines up with the wiggle shank.
It has to kind of taste like guava. Just kidding. I don't want to get a note saying, Hey, mine didn't taste like guava. <laughs> now I've got some, once again, Senyo's Laser Dub, but this is in the olive. And you can see me lining up, I'm lining up the fibers, so once again that they're all lined up together. I'll use a comb and I'll pull things out. Sometimes I get real lucky and I'll get a package that's all lined up and pulls right out. Now that's the top of my fly. Now see how I leave a little bit of a bear hook there? That's because you'll see when I put the fish mask on. Once again, a little drop of super glue just to nail that baby down. Just a little bit. Don't overdo it. It soaks in and it makes the fibers stiff. Now I've got a piece of pearlescent sheeting, three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch and I'm folding it in half and it's going to be my gill plates. Cut off, I mean, I'm just trimming it off. And the back side's going to fit, Gonna I'm going to round it off so it looks like your gill plates. I'm going to take my tweezers and place it for me. So I got an identical sides and I've cut off the nose and I put that nose port where I cut off and pull it down. Wrap that sucker down. Those are my gill plates. You can see the split on the top. Whip finish. Now I'm just coloring the thread because it shows through on the on the fish mask. From my thread. Touch up again underneath. I didn't get that white thread underneath. I'm just giving it a little color to kill, just to kill the white. Now I'm smearing a little bit of super glue because I'm going to attach my fish mask. And this is a fish mask in small. Now see that little empty space I left? I'm drawing, I'm wrapping some thread there so it'll keep the, not that the head's gonna go anywhere, but I'm just making sure. And so I'm just wrapping that thread so it blocks it from coming off.
I'm going to add some eyes. These are from Flyman Com Fish Company also. And they're uh, the smalls. And there are fires with the column. They got that red color, which is what I like. Let me just add them to both sides. Now I'm taking a little bit of thin UV resin and I'm going to coat the eyes on both sides as well as get a little bit of just a little bit of a coating on the gill plate. Now I don't go all the way to the end on the gill plate, just into the, into the intersection, mainly because it gets too stiff and it'll break off. Hit it with my laser. Do it to the other side. Now notice how I don't go all the way to the end. I just get a portion. Probably half of that gill plate is covered. And I make sure I get some on the top. Once again, hit it with my laser. Nice little specular head, shiny, nice attractor, as well as with the orange and the size and shape and the movement. Now I'm taking some hand sanitizer, which is alcohol based, and I am pressing it into the body of the fly. And the reason I do that is so that it gives me the shape so that I can paint airbrush on the stripes. And it gives me also a look of what it's going to look like. And so it, it's used for a couple purposes. The main one being that it gives me the shape that I, I need, final shape, and then also lets me airbrush it. Now, I've taken the fly and I've opened up my camera and looking from the top. I've cut some slits in just a plain piece of plastic and I've got... Uh, an airbrush with a pen. This is, um, I forget the name, Cop Copic. And this is Spanish olive. And I'm painting on my stripes. What's nice with this system is you can change the colors out just by changing out the marker. And I've run out of a little bit of paint. I got just a little bit left in there and I'm going to have to fill it up a bit. And that's the other nice part. You don't have to buy pens. You can actually buy refills and that, that, that refill will fill one of those pens three times. This, you can see I've got a can underneath the bottom, but you can also have an adapter so that it hooks up to an air compressor. Well, that's one side. So you get those nice stripes. Now I'm going to turn it over and do the same thing. See, I like the stripes to come right behind, to start right behind the gill plates. Well, I've run out of ink. I'm going to refill the darn thing. So I refilled my airbrush. And I'm going back in now to paint those stripes. Now, to get a little, I get a really hard edge, which is what I want. But if you want to get a fuzzier edge, just lift the template up or the mask off. And some of the ink will get underneath it. And so you won't get as hard an edge. And as I said, this is just a piece of plastic that I've just cut slots into 
as a mask. And you can use it over and over again. And it's alcohol based, based this ink, so it's pretty easy to clean up. And that's the other side. I'm going to take it back and remount it into my vise so you can see the final effect. And that's the final effect. This is my articulated perch. And I have tested it. It does wiggle. And I have been catching fish with it this summer. <laughs>